Hello everyone, it's Rob. Uh, used to be known as 26 Bond, but I've just used my normal name now. It's Rob Doran from the UK. Uh, doing a little review. First time I've done a CD review. Uh, but I'm going to do one today. And it's my good friend Matt Bass. New CD. And he's obviously the main man of this band. A one man band, black metal band from the UK, Witch Clan. Who do play Beastial Hell Metal exclusively. Matt, don't you mate? I can tell by listening to this, you do play Beastial Hell Metal pretty much exclusively. Um, now, I was thinking of this funnily enough, and what that basically means is that that's everything that Matt Bass has absorbed. He is a bit like a metal sponge in as much as he absorbs uh, music he listens to, industrial black metal, techno, gabba 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 hay music and it's basically made a new genre called bestial hell metal so if you're wondering what he means by that, which I'm sure you're not cause it's pretty self-explanatory that's how he got there, I'm sure, isn't it Matt? Um, but I've been following Witch Clan's career since about 1975 I'm joking, they haven't been going that long, in fact I don't think you were even born then mate were you? Uh, but uh, I've picked up various bits of Witch Clan stuff along the way. This is Misanthropist, um, his first CD effort, which was uh, Stonkin Black Metal Record. But I must admit, I'm going to tell you something quickly. It's not as good as this one. Uh, and I've got a few of these quite rare sort of promo tapes and demos. Um, this one here. Uh, there's only 50, 15 of these in, in the world and I've got number 12 uh, and you haven't uh, and it's basically their 2011 promo tape and it's got an intro uh, uh, three songs and an outro uh, so Conqueror Through Nordic Lands and Misanthropist and uh, that's very good because he always likes to to write little messages in there and um, it's all very nicely done, he's a very classy guy. So I was very pleased to get get hold of this stuff. And this is the Descend Into Darkness demo, uh, which incidentally, um, one of the tracks off the Dark Binding comes originally from this Descend Into Darkness demo. I've got number 41 of 200, and I'm actually mentioned in there as being a life influence on Matt Bass. He looks at me and wants to be like me. I'm only joking. Right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the new record issued through US label Elvesta Records. This is Witch Clan's The Dark Binding. Let's give you an idea of the cover, um, which was done by the same guy that did Misanthropist and also Descend Into Darkness demo. Um, and it's very nicely rendered as you can see there. All the tracks, so you've got an intro, an outro, a good amount of tracks. Um, that's the CD. There's a pic of, uh, of Matt there, looking very atmospheric in the forest. Um, where's the corpse paint, mate? Gotta wear, the, gotta wear corpse paint. And of course inside, um, he likes to put down what he's screaming and growling all about there. And he mentions his good pals that I mentioned again. <gasps> Tell you what, you're a top man, mate. So I've listened to this a couple of times, and obviously by looking at this particular video, you know that you'll know that me and Matt go back a long way. We used to take trade in the early 90s. Um, we used to go record shopping together in Hastings and Guildford along with a good friend of ours, Andy McIver, uh, from Code. And we generally had a great time. Now, that, those were the, were the days of, of tape trading and uh, not being able to download stuff or go on YouTube and find information and music on bands. So they were really good days. If you wanted to learn about a band, you had to research them and you actually had to go on a bit of a metal hunt uh, to find out more about them. So those were the good old days. So. Matt and I do go back a long way, but that's not to say I won't give him a fair review. If I think something needs improving, this is a good place to tell him. Not to his face, because he'll probably kick my ass. Uh, but actually, I really liked it. Uh, this is a no bullshit review. Um, for example, 
uh, drum sound. Now I know um, these are program drums. Uh, Misanthropist um, was okay. This is much better. So Matt's programming on, on the drums has come on leaps and bounds and excellent. Um, there's a lot of tremolo picking going on. I've basically made some notes about every track because I wanted to give you an idea. Um, but there's some little surprises in there. It's not your atypical black metal release. So it starts with an intro and ends with an outro, which I believe the spoken words done by his wife, Carmel. And it works very, very nicely, atmospheric, uh, and leads very nicely into the opener. Uh, Worms of Hypocrisy, which is a bit of a mid-paced track, um, very double-tracked vocals, which I thought was very, very, it's very convincing. It sounds very professional. You have the high bits and you have the low growl, and that's something certainly I would have thought Matt would have got originally from sort of Glenn Benton from Deerside. He was one of the first people to sort of start doing that style, and Matt does it very, very well. A lot of tremolo picking, there's a lot of dissonance, but it's overall, it's a very, very strong opening track. The next track, Treading on Angels. Now I hear an awful lot of Pro Fanatica in there, um, in terms of the riffs. Um, there's an awful lot of blasphemic sighing and moaning going on. Um, but I also thought as well, there was some slight glimpses in the music of sort of King Diamond, Merciful Fate. It was quite melodic in places. Um, some of Matt's riffs are very much like Andy LaRoque from King Diamond. So, you know, if you like that sort of thing as opposed to full on shrieking black metal, this CD does have parts of that in there. But I've also wrote down here that parts of this particular track invoked the spirit of certainly early Burzum. Um, going back to the tremolo picking and things like that and this the second track Treading on Angels I think overall is my favorite song it's excellent the next one Dawn of the Serpent Kings now this was the track which was originally recorded uh, I think in 2011 for the Descend into Darkness uh, demo tape and uh, as I've put down here you can sort of tell that it's one of Matt's older efforts now, it isn't to say that it isn't as accomplished as tracks one and two, but there's certain, um, it's not as strong, I think, in composition, in my opinion, than the other two. Uh, the, the other two are, are of a more, coming from a more mature songwriter, whereas this one, you can still see that he's, you know, he's finding his feet, he's experimenting. So it's a good track. Um, but it really highlighted to me the, the top quality nature of the first two in particular. Uh, the next one, Beyond the Seventh Gate, uh, Fast Furious, a black metal blast through the Nordic gates of um, doom. Basically, there's nothing sophisticated about this track whatsoever in my eyes. This is raw black metal, it's uncompromising black metal. Um, but it also has some nice keyboards mid-song, which I thought breaks it up really, really nicely. So there's a nice bit of pacing in, in between uh, the middle of both the end and the beginning of this song, which, like I say, it breaks it up nicely. Um, and in terms of guitar sound on this one, it's going to be old school Necro Bathory. It can't beat that. Very, very old school. Uh, the next song, A New Dawn. Bloody hell, Matt, this is total and utter old school haunting the chapel, hello eight slayer, bloody worship, mate. But I also thought that was in terms of the atmosphere. In terms of the music and the riffs, it's got rain and blood written all over it. Hanuman and King, you could see them, the side of the stage, the hair going in unison, banging away. I, I really enjoyed this one. Um, after it's very fast, slayery, starts and beginnings it sort of morphs a little bit into sort of like the almost maiden territory with this sort of gallop so it's very melodic in places as well and generally a really really good tight well played metal thrashy metal song next one up pathway to immortality um keyboards discordant the atmosphere is still there again uh mid-paced thrashy riffs 
Uh, I've wrote down here, it's very eerie. It reminds me of like the, the sound an old haunted toy would make. It's, it's very, very dis disturbing, almost like a like a little bit of of of, of a Alice Cooper intro. Some of the intros to sort of um, mid period Cooper stuff. He used to have old toys making funny noises, and just reminded me of that. Like I said, guys, this is not stock black metal. There's influences coming from everywhere. Um, in terms of riffs, I, I hear Massacre, so there's Death Metal. I hear Shuldiner from Death. I just hear the riffs, and I can imagine it's something uh, that those bands would have created as well. So the influences are all there. We've said Alice Cooper, haven't we? We've said Maiden, Massacre, Burzum, Death. Uh, Maiden, Slayer, so there's a big, this album's really running the gamut of metal, uh, but it's putting it into this bestial hell metal genre, which is exactly what it was. Now what I did say with this song, uh, you could imagine Rick Ross doing one of his tremolo leads over it, it was almost, it's almost custom made for that, um, so yeah, it's really, really enjoyed that song. Crossing of, of the Spheres, uh, an atmospheric piece reminded me a bit like The Crying Orc by Burzum. Um, thick, powerful power chords then come in once you've heard the intro. And um, I've got a bit o OTT. I was writing various words and lines when I was listening. And I wrote thick power chord slabs of impending doom counterpart what is a rather soulful melody and I think that really sums that track up well it's the light and it's the shade um, and vocals this is something that I put on Facebook on the UK black metal page but Matt's vocals on this this is what I said dead influenced black croaks of revulsion so there's a there's a harking back to another band mayhem one of the progenitors of uh, the second wave black metal so it's all top stuff uh, the last proper song, not, not counting the outro, is a track called Never Ending Funeral. Uh, and I've said here when I was listening to it, it ends the record on a rather reflective note. But also, strangely, on one of hope. It's musically, it's sludgy doom metal, in my opinion, a la Saint Vitus and Trouble. And this is obviously a um, tribute song in remembrance of one of Matt's friends that sadly died earlier on this year. Um, so uh, it ends the record on, on, a, on a sum, on, on a, certainly a sombre note, but also has uh, visions of hope in it as well, which is all very good. So overall, um, I hope you've got an idea of what, what this CD is like. I do recommend it. If you like any of those bands that I've mentioned here, um, they're certainly uh, big influences to Matt but he's sort of woven that into his own style so uh, this is Witch Clan The Dark Binding um, well worth checking out you can get this via Matt I'm sure on Facebook Matt Base Witch Clan or go on to Elvesta Records I think there's a cassette version as well coming out on Darkness Shades record which is an exclusive with them I think they're in the UK and you can also get via Elvesta various packages and this is coming out on vinyl Okay, so uh, this comes out, I believe, on Halloween. Uh, so if you might want to order it, definitely try, because it's one that comes heartily recommended from me. So well done, Matt. Hope you like the, like the uh, review. And uh, keep making records, and we'll keep buying them. Cheers, mate.